husband and a wife's God. Oh, how we need you, we need you. The loneliness of the people go to God. The loneliness. We struggle with sickness, God. Things that we need healing for today. Jesus, we bring them for you. So here I am, I present my body as a living sacrifice. Come on, somebody, come on, somebody. Yeah. Why did you come to church? Why did you come? Why did you come in this cold weather?
Want to leave the floor open for maybe two testimonies, you know, uh, what God has done in your life, and if you would like to share, amen. Praise God. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we should always give God thanks and praise amen. for waking us up in the mornings. Somebody didn't make it this morning. But I'm, but I'm here to tell you that God is alive and he is well. You know, a few days ago, before Christmas, I lost my wallet. And I was feeling a little bit down. But the Holy Spirit let me know, don't feel this fear. Because you're going to get it back and everything in it. But sometimes the enemy will tell you, you might get it back, but not with everything. And I tell a few people, and they say to me, well, I know you might get it back, but if you have money in it, you're not getting it back. But I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true. I got my wallet back with everything in it. Just as I have. It came to me in the mail. This morning, I hardly get any sleep because the Holy Spirit was ministering to me so. And I tried to turn it off so I could get some sleep, but it, it, he just wouldn't hush. But he's telling me some things that he's going to do for us, Christ people. And he tells us that our healing is in his praise. Whatever we need is in his praise. We should always praise him.
just want to go to one passage of scripture taken from the book of Proverbs, if you can do that quickly. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 24. If you can stand, we just want you to stand for this, for the reading of God's word as we reverence him. Proverbs chapter 17. And we want to look at just one verse, verse 24. And as you're doing that, we just want to welcome everybody. Yeah, I want to say a special Happy New Year to you. Amen. Are we grateful for what is in store for us? Because I know our Father delighted, amen, to do good things for His children. And so we know as we journey through this year that we can have confidence that God designed the best for us. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 24. Wisdom is before him that had understanding, but the eyes of your fool are in, are in the ends of the earth. Can we read that together one more time? Wisdom is before him that had understanding, but the eyes of your fool are in the ends of the earth. We thank God for his reading of his word, which is blessed. Tell your neighbor before you have your seat, neighbor. This year is your year. Be blessed this morning. You may have your seat. I welcome you this morning. We want to thank the team this morning. Many of them press their way through, and it's not easy, especially for those who are traveling and those who have to drive. I know it. Sometimes when you shovel out your spot, especially if you have a pack on the street, you know when you go back, you may not get that pack. But we're glad that you're here today. I know the beginning of the, of, of the New Year's Eve service, many people have made resolution in the world and in the church. I thought for a moment that one of the resolutions is that I will be more in church. <laughs> That in our resolution we say, whether storm, rain, snow, whatever, I'm going to be in his presence. But I have to tell you that many people make, make resolution. And it is, it is proven. But at least three weeks of that resolution, you will break it. It is proven. You see, if you're trying to do something on just your own strength, you're not going to succeed. But if your dependency is upon God, you're going to make it. I am. You're going to make it. And it was, for these couple of days, was very trying. The word of the Lord did say to us that Moses declared to the children of Israel as they were to make their entrance into the promised land that he assure them that God will be their provider. God will be their protector. And God will be their victory. And we can count on the same today. That this new year God will be your provider. He will be your protector. And he will be your victory. How many can say amen to that? Amen. And so we are grateful. But he says that this year will be a year of mountains and valleys. I can speak for my own self and many of you, some things has happened already. Some I know of and some I don't. But even with me, I had to hop a ride on New Year's Day after we leave service. My key was apparently lost. On top of that, on New Year's morning when I got up, went out to my vehicle, I saw, got a ticket on my vehicle. I say, wow. Sometimes things that happen to this cottage. But I remember the sermon because when I preach, I didn't just preach to you, I preach to myself. So when I got the ticket, I remember the same rain that fall on the mountain is going to run down in your valley. And God reminds me of that. So it doesn't matter our technical names that we carry. But as individuals, as sons of the kingdom of God, we will experience mountains 
and we will experience that. I have been meditating on the Lord because this is not an easy task to minister to God's people. Always in prayer, always praying, seeking the peace of because there's so many things that many people want to do. Many people have plans. But I believe today that sometimes we need a personal word, which is which is great. But many times God is speaking from a public setting, but we gotta open up our ear to hear what he's saying. I hear me this morning. I want to speak to you from a subject as I engage in this passage of scripture this morning, how to make the most of 2014. Already we are on what the fifth day. And it seems just was just last night. It's the fifth day already. Time is our currency. And what you do with your time is very important. Are you following me this morning? From the Good News translation of the Bible, the same passage of scripture from Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 24 reads like this. An intelligent person aims at wise action but a fool starts off in many direction i want you to ponder on this this morning an intelligent person aims at wise action but a fool starts off in many direction with this in mind for many already we can't believe that 2013 is gone. It's over. It seems that with each passing year, it seems like time just speeds up. Because just now in the blink of our eyes, if so to speak, we might be celebrating the dawning of 2015, hoping that we'll be alive. It seems that only yesterday, many across the globe and many of the churches were worried about the uncertainties of the dawning of a new year. Because the concerns were great because of the unknown, of not knowing what is going to happen. But I want you to know we made it through 2013. Amen. That's, that's, that's a place to give God praise. Amen. We made it through 2013. Some people thought you wouldn't make it. But you did. You're still here. I hear me. And so when we look back, we can appreciate that we have made it thus far. And now we are faced with another new year. We all can do the one of two things in this year. New Year 2014. We can waste it away by sitting around and worrying about things we have failed to accomplish in 2013. Or the mistakes that we have made throughout the year of 2013. You and I, we can sit around and mop or have a pity party because Things didn't go the way that we anticipated or the way that we wanted to go. Are you following me? Or we could decide right now, or we can make a decision in our life to make the most of 2014 that God has granted us. And you are alive and you in this year 2014 is because God is faithful. God's plan for you is still intact. Amen. And the reason that you are alive and you're in the, uh, at this time, amen, in this new year is because God still has purpose for your life this morning. If you believe that, would you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. I'm here to declare to you that this could be the greatest year of yours. But you have had 
up to this point this morning, if you make a conscious decision to do whatever it takes to have a great year. Sitting and just waiting for things to happen is not going to happen. That's right. That's why I said on New Year's Eve, there's three kinds of people all last week. There's three, kind, three kinds of people. Those who don't know what is happening. Those who will ask the question, what just happened? <laughs> and then those who will make things happen. That's right. I hear me this morning. The point that I want to get across this morning is whatever we are going to do with our lives for 2014, we had better get on the move because time is moving on. That's right. I'm learning to understand how precious time is and how valuable time is because it have people can waste your time. That's right. You can waste your time. You know, we may not think it like think lightly of it, but if somebody have you waiting for two hours, that's two hours of your life you can't get back. If somebody tell you to jump, you better stand. Or if they tell you stand, better jump. If they're not a person of their word, that is. Are you hearing me this morning? Tell your neighbor, time is precious. Time is not going to sit still until you and I can make up our minds about what we are going to do. One other point that I want to make is this. If we are not doing something within our lives, it really doesn't matter how long the year is or how much time we have left in this new year. Because you're not doing anything with your life. And you'll find people like that. They're not doing nothing, so they don't really care about if Monday fall on a Friday. Like we used to say back home, you live in life like in London. So what are you going to do in 2014? How will this year be any different than 2013 that has gone? I want you to ask yourself this question this morning. What are you going to do? How many of you would like 2014 to be better than 2013? Just lift your hands. I believe all of us want 2014 to be greater and better than 2013. Last year was a tough year. It was a year of challenges for many. A year of choices. It was a year of changes for many. For some, it was a year of crisis. The fact is, this morning, is for some of you, the year 2013 was more of a disappointment than joy. Some of you have experienced losses of different kinds. And for some of you, it may have been a year of many setbacks and failures. The bad news is, and there is bad news in that. The bad news is there is nothing that you and I can do to change what happened last year. Because it's gone. Can you just pinch the person next to you? Maybe that might wake them up or... They might feel a little pain. You felt that? Did you feel that pinch? Don't worry about it. It's going to go. That's the bad news. We can't do anything about what has happened in 2013. But the good news is that you and I, we can learn from last year. And today we have the opportunity to step over and make some changes. Amen. I hear me. Make some changes with your life. I have come to a point in my life, if I want different results, I can be doing the same thing. If you're doing the same thing with your life, you're going to get the same results. 
You'll be surprised how many people that are doing the same thing with your life, but they want to see changes. You got to make changes if you want to get different results. Are you hearing me this morning? And so we will get to that. God brings life to us in small pieces that we know this morning as hours and days and months. And at the beginning of every year, in other words, you will say it like this, let's wipe the slate clean and let us start with a brand new year. So how many are grateful that you can start 2014 knowing that God will has wiped out your slate clean this morning? Because many people have come to a place when they were making their resolutions or their vow, they had a repentant heart. Because they recognize within themselves, I have failed God in one way or the other, whether it be through the words or thought indeed. And so therefore when they repent, they know that God will, is one that will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. He will make the slave clean so that I can stand afresh for this 2014. How many believe that this morning? And so he says, let's wipe their slate clean. God is saying, let's start over. And how many of you know this morning that is great news? God has given, it, given us an opportunity to start over. To do things better than what we were doing before. To make changes in our life that will please Him. To make changes with that, that will accommodate His Holy Spirit in our life and stop making excuses. Hello, somebody. You see, people can make excuses and think they're, they're fooling God, but really and truly, God knows the very intent of our hearts. That's right. Are you hearing me this morning? I don't worry about people making excuses for me because. I pray for people, and I know they're making excuses God sees. Yep. Hello, somebody. Yep. Tell your neighbor God sees. God sees. So the Bible tells us from this particular passage of scripture, an intelligent person aims at wise action. But a fool starts off in many directions. For many, the last part of this verse describes them. And they're just talking about in the church, but, but throughout the different hemisphere. It says a fool starts off in many directions. If we were to ask ourselves this question and really contemplate what it is saying, does, does, does this describe you? You start your year off in haste, going in many different di directions, at one time with no plan of action. I believe if we were to succeed, for 2014, if we were to, to receive all that God has for us and to be able to make our life come for something, there must be a plan of action. I hear me. We just can't afford just to do anything anyhow or go to do this in different direction. We must have a plan of action for our life if we want to, to really succeed, amen, and receive all that God has for us in 2014. Notice the words at the beginning of this verse. It says, an intelligent person aims at wise action. That means they have a goal. They have a plan this morning. An objective this morning, an aim, a target in other words. Have you set goals for 2014? Did you have a plan of action? Just before the, the new year, we met with the board and we, we sat down and we, we have put things on paper, what we want to accomplish for 2014. The things that God is, is, has placed in our heart and therefore is our objective to, to, to put things and, and strategy and people to have this plan become effective in 2014, Amen. which you are included in again. I want everybody to know in the same token, the vision for your life this morning. 
If you're part of this ministry and you feel that you belong in this ministry, your vision for your life is encapsulated in the bigger vision for the ministry. And when you humble yourself and put yourself in a place for God to use you, as you do the things that God will have you to do, you will see in the bigger vision of things, you will see your vision come into pass. Are you hearing me this morning? Is it because we have to have this mindset this morning that God didn't just establish the local church that exists so we could go here and there and everywhere. But God has instituted the local churches so that he can, there are people that God has set into a particular local church to do a particular, um, 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 fulfill a particular vision for that particular community. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. So do you have a set plan or do you have set goals for 2014 or are you just living day by day or are you just going to walk around into this year and hope it's better I'm here to declare to you that we got to have a plan we got to have a plan this morning I want to share with you four keys that will help us all to get the most of this year 2014. We understand that keys can be used to start something or to use to open doors. Is that so? It is my prayer this morning that these keys will start off on the right footing and in the right direction as we apply it to our life. And it's also my prayer that you will see these keys to open the doors of opportunity that God has placed before you. If I put a label to these keys, I'm just going to say A, B, C, and D. Let's look at key A. Accept responsibility for your life. If we're going to become all that God wants us to be in 2014, we got to accept the responsibilities for our life. This is something that is hard for many people to do. Some people will rather blame someone else for the problems and difficulties in their life. And this is not new. This is an old strategy of the enemy. And you can believe that it's still working today. These people that goes around looking for someone who will accept responsibilities for them. Someone who will accept responsibilities for the way they live their lives and the choices they make. When things don't turn out the way they anticipate or the, the way that they hope for it, they have someone that they can blame. Amen. Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. Amen. Accepting responsibilities for one life is not a popular concept in our society because you and I, we live in a culture that embraces a concept called political correctness. This basically says, none of your problems are your fault. Everything bad in your life is somebody else's fault. Blame the environment. Blame the educator, the teacher. Blame your parents. Blame anybody else, but it is not your fault. And that's the type of, uh, uh, of the culture that we live in this time. In our life. Blame everybody else, but it's not my fault. If you get in an accident, it's never your fault. If you spill coffee on yourself, sue McDonald's or Dunkin' Donut or one of those um, places. It's always somebody else's fault. We will never, and hear me when I say this today, we will never be successful in our life. And we will never make our life count if we have the attitude that it is somebody else's fault. 
you and I, and we all together, as a community, must stop the blame game Amen. and take responsibility for our action this morning. Yes. We must accept the responsibilities of our own lives. The choices that we make are hear me this morning. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 5 declares to us, each person must be responsible for himself. The King James Version says it this way, for every man shall bear his own burden. Here's the truth of the scripture. I am responsible for my life if I like it or not. Tell your neighbor you're responsible for your life. All of us, us here this morning face two kinds of circumstances. And these circumstances this morning, which we have no control over. None of us here this morning knows what we will face throughout this coming year. None. They can go to Cleo, she can rub that crystal ball. I don't know if she has it now because she's in jail. <laughs> you can go on to the suit sales. They're opening more shops now and driving through this community and there are more shops now. Come, let's read your pan. Them people who are approaching you while you're sitting in a vehicle and say, let me read your pan for five dollars. Because they think they can tell you what tomorrow is what's going to happen tomorrow. But I'm here to declare to you, nobody knows what is going to happen throughout the course of this year except God. Are you hearing me this morning? And when you put yourself in a place to seek Him, He will reveal things to you. Are you following me this morning? There are certain things that are going to happen regardless of what you do and how you plan your year. So even though, yes, we must have a plan, there are things that is going to happen regardless if we have a plan. But that is no excuse for not being prepared this morning for not, for not having a plan. Or having a plan. Let me draw some examples this morning, so break this down. There's something that we have no control over. We have no control over the weather. Otherwise, if, if, if we had control, right now it could be 70 degrees. You have no control over the weather. We have no control over the economy of this world. The company that you work for, you have no control over that. Or the words and actions of others. That's important to understand. You have no control over the words spoken by others. But you do have control how you will either respond or react. That's what you have control of. So if somebody says something to you, whether in the church or in your job, amen, or in the community or your neighbor, amen, regardless of what they say, you have control of how you are either going to react or respond. And I said reaction is based by your emotions. Because when you allow what people say to affect you, you will react. And many times reaction is caused fire, fighting fire with fire. But responding is acknowledging what the word of God says. That's what we have control over. Are you following me this morning? There are some circumstances that we face as a result of my own choices action or lack of action. I have known people that have had financial problem. The reason for this is because they picked their job and they didn't have another job to go to. Anybody know anybody like that? They quit their job but they didn't have a next job to go to. And the reason they quit their job is because they didn't like it or somebody made them mad on the job. 
or the boss giving them a hard time. Then when things got tight, money and food was low. These people who quit and didn't have a next job to go to, they blame their family. They blame the church or somebody in the church. Because their family, the church or somebody in the church refused to accept the responsibilities for the decision and actions of those people. What they really wanted was someone to accept responsibility for their life and bail them out of trouble. I am. There are people like that in the world. And I'm not talking about someone who through no fault of his or her own fell on hard times because there are many people hard times have come to them. And there's no, it is no fault of theirs. I'm talking about someone that did something without considering the consequences of his or her action and how these actions this morning would affect others around them. I think it would be a wise thing if you're going to leave a job, make sure that you have something else that you can hold on to. Is that wise? That's why to interject a thought here this morning that before you make any major decision in your life, because I had to make some decisions, major decisions in my life, but I want you to know this morning, I made those decisions based on what God's word says. Hello, somebody. Amen. Not based on how I feel at the moment. Because sometimes how you feel at the moment can cause you to make some bad decisions. You don't make decisions when you're hungry. Because we all know a hungry man is an angry man. And wives know their husbands. They're irritated when they don't get food. I think sometimes that, that's the effect that have on me. <laughs> you don't make decisions when you're tired. You don't try to make a decision when you're sick. I am. But when you do have to make a decision, make your decision based on what the Word of God says. Are you hear me this morning? We need to understand that there are three kinds of people in life. I think last week I talked about those who make things happen, those who ask just what just happened, and those who don't even know what is happening. But let me speak about three other types of people. These three other type of people there, number one, they are those who are accusers. Then there are those who are excusers. And then there are those who are choosers. Those who are excusers, their mindset will be they blame everybody else for their problems. Their favorite phrase is, it's all your fault. And it's never my fault. It is somebody else's fault. These are their accusers. Now those, the second group of people is those who make excuses. These people are those that always have an excuse for not making a decision or doing something. There's always a reason why they can't make the most or get the most out, out of their year. In the long run this morning, they end up being losers. So those who make excuses and keep on making excuses will end up becoming losers. I have discovered that whatever I want to procrastinate on something, any excuse will do. Hello, somebody. It's like, I 
remember my mom is here. I remember she wanted me to go to a crusade and I didn't want to go. And I remember getting licks on that night. Licks? <laughs> because she wanted me to go. But I made every excuse that I could make. Because I didn't want to go. I hear me. And what I'm saying this morning, when you set your mind not to do something, you can make all the excuses and give all the legit reason you think that you can give just not to do it. And you'd be surprised how many people pro procrastinate. The Bible says, and I paraphrase it this way, a lazy man is full of excuses. I hear me. A lazy man is full of excuses. I'm tired today, I'm going to do tomorrow. And when tomorrow comes, they have a next excuse why they're not doing it. I hear me this morning. So we have the accusers, we have those who make excuses, and then yeah, the choosers. The choosers are those that say, I choose to accept the responsibility for my own life. The goals and happiness. I am not dependent on somebody else. I choose the direction of my life. I hear you. I'm not dependent on the crowd. So if the crowd is going in this particular direction, and it's not in the direction that God wants for me, I'm not going to go because everybody is going. Amen. I hear yes, Why am I saying that? Because 2014, there'll be times that you have to make a decision to go against the crowd. Yes, I hear me. To stand for your faith, to stand for what you believe. That's right. Because we live in, in a world, amen, that people have eaten airs and only want to hear things that will satisfy them. I hear me. And they will live a life of compromise just to be some way feel good by a word, amen, that is not the truth. I hear me this morning. That's why when you touch on certain things that the Bible declares is a sin, people don't want to hear you preach on sin. They don't want to, you preach on holiness because they want to live their life anyhow and, and believe that God will accept them just the way they are. I want you to know that God loves you. Amen. He loves you. And He knows about your failures. He knows about your inconsistencies this morning. But He don't love the sins that you commit. Are you happy this morning? But He loves you. And God desired the best for your life this morning. So when you, if you are a chooser, you're going to accept the responsibility for the decisions that you make in your life. If I choose to make decisions and it's blocking out the blessings of God for my life and for my children and my family, there's nobody else to blame. I cannot blame God. I will take the blame for myself. Because I have made decisions to block the, block the blessings of God coming my way. When we don't receive the blessings of God, we try to blame God, blame the church, blame the pastor, blame, blame everything, blame the dog, blame the cat. You'll be surprised when people are frustrated because the consequences they're facing, they're always irritated. Are you hear me this morning? There is no peace. There is no joy. Everything is a problem. One little road you run across, you have a world of problems. Yeah. <laughs> Are you hearing me this morning? But you see, if we are choosers and we accept the responsibilities, we will be already be jumped ahead in 2014. So accept the responsibilities. The second thing is believe I can change. Stop saying I can't. And start saying I can. 
2013, you'll be surprised. I, I, I was listening to, uh, to uh, 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 well, actually watching a clip. I was going to show you this one, but we had some technical difficulties here today. And you'll be surprised to understand that so many people died and went to the grave with talents and with skills. I hear me, that went with them, that they never used. I hear me. When God has placed giftings in each one of us to make a difference. Yes. And when called upon, amen, to use your gift for the kingdom of God, you'll be surprised how many people make excuses because they tell themselves, I can. Yeah. Somebody say, yes, I can. Yeah. The person that believes that they can change with the help of God will change. Yes. Yes. Philippians chapter 4 verse 15 declares in the Jerusalem Bible, there is nothing I cannot master with the help of Christ who gives me strength. That's why Paul in his declaration says, I can do all things to Christ Jesus who strengthened me. When somebody just lift your hand and say, I can this morning. I can. Believe I can change. Do you believe that verse this morning? There's nothing that I can't master. That means there is nothing I'm going to hit in the next 365 days or rather 300 and probably 60 days. No problem, no situation, no circumstances, no hassle that I can't handle, that I can't manage, that I can not competent to handle with the help and strength that God has given to me. So whatever come your way, you can. You can overcome. I hear me. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You'll be surprised how many things we can do for people regardless of our condition. Because the accolades of people inspire us at times. Now people can say, well done. You did this great and we feel good with him. But what about God this morning? The God who believes in you. The God who sees you at your worst and still have confidence that you are able to do it this morning. Many people never succeed in life because they believe that it can change. The only thing I know that can change well right now is a scent or a pen. I remember they used a sl I used a slang, you like a scent boy or a penny, you can't change. But I believe that we can change. They never enjoy life because life to them is just one big failure after another. Some people are afraid to launch out and do what God wants them to do because they're always rever re reverting back to their failures. They face this new year, 2014, with regrets rather than joy of knowing that God has given them the opportunity to make a difference in their own life with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe this morning that every one of you are special in the sight of God. I believe this morning, and hear me when I said this this morning, I mean it with all my heart. Yes, God has placed me to shepherd this ministry. But I can't do it alone. Because in the areas where we, God has sent help. I hear me. So that we can articulate, amen, God's plan and the vision for this ministry. And so that we can put our hands together as workers together in building the kingdom of God. I remember this, this man. And he went into this business meeting. He was... He was the, the, the CEO of this company. And everybody else in this meeting from different companies, they had a PhD and they were well educated, but this man just had common sense. And this was a, a high type meeting for these CEOs. 
And this man went in with six other men with him. And they asked him, this, this meeting is just for the CEOs. He said, see all these guys who came with me? They are the greatest asset of this company. Because even though I am the boss, I couldn't do what I've been doing without them. Are you hearing me this morning? Why I'm saying that is because God has placed a measure of grace in every one of us to impact his kingdom. And the measure of grace that you have given to you this morning, amen, is sufficient, amen, to do what he wants you to do. Are you me this morning? So don't ever think that you are incapable of doing because God says you can. Amen. Somebody shout out, I can this morning. Amen. I believe I have discovered why there are so many New Year's parties where people get so drunk and they can't even see straight or walk straight. They get drunk to forget their past year and because they are afraid to face the new year. But by the help and grace of God this morning, I can overcome the past and face the future. Amen. We are in 2014 that there are many people are still stuck with the 2013 mentality. Amen. And if you are living your life in the past, I want you to know your future is just what it is. Because anybody who's living their life in the past, that is what their future will look like. I hear. But when you have a mindset this morning that understand that I can do all things through Christ Jesus, and you hold to what God is saying, I want you to know your future is going to take on a different perspective. Are you me this morning? I have a new handle in life for this new year. And I believe and know I can change. How many know that I can change? Amen. Not on my own power, but with the power that Christ gave me. The Bible is full of stories who can, who God has changed people because they believe that they could change after God touched them. God called a man by the name of Moses and he says, I want to use you to save a nation. And Moses says, me? In other words, I get kicked out of Egypt because I kill a guy. And I'm a murderer. Now I'm out here in the desert feeding sheep. And on top of that, I'm a man of stuttering lips. I'm slow of speech, in other words. You want me to be the spokesman for a nation? God says, yes, I'm going to use you. Are you happy? Look at another man named Gideon. When the nation of Israel was, was run over by the enemy, God says to Gideon, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you, Gideon, to save your country. And Gideon said, me? I'm the youngest kid in the, in the poorest family in the smallest tribe in the nation of Israel. And God says, yes, I'm going to use you. God can use me, and God can use you, regardless of what background, or regardless of the inconsistencies in your life, He can use you. The good news is God wants to use you. And I'm here to declare to you that 2014, let it be a year where you are sold up for God that He can use you to make a difference in the times that we live in. Are you hearing me this morning? First, you must accept the responsibility for your own life. And second, you must believe that you can change. And God give you the power to change if you will trust it. The third thing, or the third lesson that we can learn from this and the letter C is to clarify what I really want you must decide what's important and what's not important that's why in today's living we must understand there are high maintenance relationships that we're holding on to 
Why did, do I call it high maintenance relationship? Because that's what it is. You pay a high price to maintain a relationship. Because in relationship, is you always have to be the one to give. Hello, somebody. I maintain a relationship is what is going to pull you away from the things of God. Hello, somebody. In other words, you must, you must come to a place and to clarify who are the people that is important in your life. Because there's some people on, in your walk or holding on to you are dead weight. I'm sorry to say it that way. Because you know why? You don't intend to do anything with your life. And they're not going any place in their life. Are you hearing me? And they're holding on to you. In other words, you become the love boat. How many of you see the love boat? And they play this nice song and everybody's smiling and getting on the boat. But God has given you sufficient provision for your journey on your ship. That's another message by itself. But you see, the people was going to Tarshish. That was their objective. It wasn't God's plan for Jonah. And he jumped on somebody else's ship. Now you hear me? And their field, their, their ship was the love boat. Because you know, God said to love people, help them out, all that is good. But when it comes to position, that the very thing that God has given you to sustain your growth and your spiritual health and it has been demised by them and they don't want what you got then you got to throw them off your boat. Tell us about Because if people are not going anywhere with their life when they get there they will know they have arrived. But how many know you're going somewhere? You're going south. <laughs> so you must decide who and what is important. God has given each of us incredible gifts called the freedom to choose. The freedom of choice. And the one thing that makes us like God, when God says in Genesis 1, let us make man in our own image that give us the freedom of choice. Are you hearing me this morning? This is one of the ways that we are different from animals. We have the freedom to choose between good and evil. How many believe that this morning? We have the freedom to choose what we want out of life. And the only way we can clarify what we really want is to make a list and decide what is important and what is not important. Are you hearing me? Hear me when I say this and I say it in this terms. You go where you're celebrated and not tolerated. I hear you. I'm going to go by people who celebrate me, and it won't be one hand. It'll be both hands shaking. Because if you celebrated me, it means that I'm celebrating you. Tell us somebody. Not tolerate people. It's amazing. Most people never do this. They never stop, think through, and write down on paper what's really important for them. Maybe some of you never have done this, but I encourage you. Make a list of what is important in your life and what is not. And when you make a list of what is important, then make, on the other side of that, put which is first on the priority of that list. You'll be surprised how people put God last. They will do everything in their life and God comes last. And we wonder why we're still struggling, wonder why we're not experiencing the blessings and the favor of the Lord. It's because we need to put God first. I, heard, I hear about people that other people talk about these people who Put God first in your life and say, boy, why is you always in church? Every service, you always there. You always staying back. What happened? That's not the way to do things. And they will share negative things towards them. But you don't understand that when you put God first, 
And when you take care of God's house, God's going to take care of you. Amen. Amen. I believe in that. You take God, care of God's house, God's going to take care of you. Are you with me this morning? We come in there close this morning. What's important to me? What's important to you? What really counts this morning? We can do what is important until we clarify what is important. Because otherwise you're going to be pushed along by the pressures of life. Doing this and doing that. And all of a sudden the year is over and you're saying, where did the year go? You ever hear people say that? Because why? You're not doing what is important. Because you're trying to do everything. You ever see somebody on a rocking chair? They're going forward, backward, and that's the motion. And they could go how fast they want. They're not going anywhere. They're still right there. How many people live their life like that? They're not doing what is important in their life. And so when the end of the year comes, you feel empty, dissatisfied. You know why? Because they didn't accomplish what was important to them. Your value determines your vision. Write that down somebody. Your value determines your vision. Your desire determines your direction. And your roles determine your goals. For 2014, your value determines your vision. And your desire determines your direction. Your role determines your goals. Most people have never made up their mind what they want out of life because if you're aiming at nothing, you're going to hit nothing. Aim for something. Are you hearing me this morning? I say aim for something. We tend to reach our place in our life, we tend to believe that we have stopped learning. But I understand that as long as you're living, you will learn something. If you choose to. I'd be surprised to see people, and I thank God to see this, that sometimes I see people coming from the Caribbean countries. If they were home, they'd never go back to school. When they were just certain age. But when they come here, and they recognize they get a good job, they're putting themselves where they could go and learn something. Yeah. Uh, and if we could do that on a secular basis, why not, why not with the things of God? Put yourself in a place to learn. So that the, the talents and the giftings can come out of you. Are you hearing me? Make commitments this morning. Most people have this vague feeling of, I just want to be happy. But they never really sat down and figure out what it is going to take to make them happy. What does God want? me to do with my life and this is important this morning what does God want you to do with your life why am I here people who have never written out your values you got to start writing down these important things I want to challenge each one of you here today to make a list of things that are important to you I hear me Things that you want to accomplish. There is room for you. What do I value? What do I want to change? Put it down. I hear me this morning. Write it down. This is a new year, believers. And then make a prayer list this morning. I want to challenge you in the same token. We're going on a 21 days fasting from tomorrow. I challenge you. Some of you say, I can't fast. That's a lie. Amen. That's a lie. <laughs> you go in one of those um, government um, buildings to do some type of things, and you line up there, you'll be hungry. <laughs> you can't leave the line. You will remain there. Am I lying? No. But say amen now. Amen. <laughs> You go to the doctor, you're waiting for your time. You think you're going to get up and go? No. You're going to wait it out. I'm just saying, if we keep this mindset that I can't do it, then you're going to tell yourself that you can't do it. 
I'm saying is you can choose how you're going to go on fasting or make some changes in your life. Make a plan of action that will help you accomplish the goals of your seed. Are you with me this morning? Make a decision for your life. What about church? Let's be a little practical here. What about church? Are you just going to just be a spectator? Not that some of you are. But I'm just seeing in the process of making decisions. Seven years ago, after leaving one ministry, I was given an opportunity to be one of the biggest church. Just function, get paid. Didn't have much responsibility because there were other pastors there. And it was nice to just go sit. And when you give it, get assignment, just do it. I could have done that. But why would I just do that? When I know God has called me to make a difference. And even if I don't have the size of ministry they have, it does matter because what God has created you to do is that what He wants you to do. Not to imitate anybody, but to be you. I hear you. And so therefore, I make a decision based on what the Holy Spirit is saying and says, you want to start this ministry. I hear you. God has sent you here. You have been in this ministry for some, a year, for some, some a couple of months, some for many years, from, some from the very inception. I thank God for every one of you. But remember what the Bible says. That this man went out to laborers and he went out in the fields and he got workers and he says, you know what? The job is from nine to five and I'm going to pay you X amount. Do you agree? And they said, yes. And they went to work. Then when no time coming, we needed more workers. So he went out and he told them. At the end of the day, the story tells us that when their owner was paying them, those who started nine was upset because those who came in from 12 got the same pay. But you see, we agreed on what they want to tell us at the beginning that we're going to work for. What I'm saying to you this morning, regardless of what stage or, or when you were here or when you came, it doesn't matter. As long as you put your hands to the plow and you be obedient to God and do what He said, God is going to reward you. I hear Because we in this together. How many can say that today? Your church life. How are you going to live your church life? Are you going to just live it and just come when you want? Or are you going to make a decision? And say, Pastor, I'm going to change. I'm going to make a decision and I'm going to commit my life to the things of God. You don't see church as just a place you come. See this as what God has instituted. Tell somebody. Because the word, the food that you will get on a Sunday and the, the blessings of the corporate blessing. God says, it's going to keep you throughout this morning. Are you with me this morning? Would you stand to your feet this morning? church just a place you come and, and chill out if that's young people terminology I'm not better to do no get that out of your perspective and your mindset when I come to church I'm coming to the meal with my God the one who is faithful the one who is giving me a strength every day of my life. The one who is there with me to the absent, to the dark. I'm coming to meet with my God this morning. Let's have a hands this morning. I want to make 2040 power.
We want to be more like you. I pray to God that it will be a process on this first Sunday morning of 2014. That God, there will be changes in my life. That I will accept the responsibility. I will believe that I can change. God, I'm going to clarify. Father, what is important and what is not. I'm going to make that decision. Oh God, Father, to become the best that you want me to be. I desire that created me to be. Father, this morning, God, I want to make 2014, God, Father, the best year of my life. God, I want to be in the place, oh God, that you can use me. God, I don't want to be an accuser. I don't want to be an excuser. But I don't want to be one who, oh God, has come to them to choose them. To choose the things of the Lord. To choose the path that you want me to go. God, this morning, as I stand here, God, I don't want to make excuses anymore. God, I know you are playing. Within me, I pray this morning, oh God, as we stand here this morning, and even as we have been served this Holy Communion, God, the emblems of God, Father, that we hold in our hands the bread and the wine. I know your word declares that we should not take this unworthily. Because if we do, many sleep among us. Many are sick. But I pray, God, this opportunity this morning that we have as sons of God, the Father God, that you will search us today. And God, thank you for second chances. And thank you, oh God, that you are the one that wiped our slate clean. And so I pray this morning that wash, wash us by the washing of water to your word this morning. Purify our hearts today. Sanctify our minds. I pray God where we have failed you, where we have sinned in word and thought and deed, where we have lost over the eyes and lust of the flesh and the pride of life, forgive us. And I pray, oh God, on this day, the 5th of January, 2014. God, I pray this morning that this moment, oh God, Father, will not be a Kronos, but a Kairos, almighty God. I pray this morning will be an invasion in our spirit and in our heart this morning. That, Father God, every excuses, everything, in your right spirit within us. And I pray, oh God, Father, that we will have a desire and a passion and determination, God. Father God, to be the best that you want us to be. I pray, God, in our mountains and in our valleys that our eyes will constantly be on you, God. You will be our total dependency. I pray, Almighty God, that we will not make excuses in 2014. But God, we will choose your way. We, you, we will choose, God, what you have in store for us. We will choose to walk in the ways of the Lord. That your word will be a lamp on our path. Oh God, a lamp on our feet and a light on our path this morning, God. I pray the meditation of our hearts and the fruits of our lips will come up to you, God. I pray, God, for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. 
that God will make a conscious decision that 2014 will be a year, God, that we will experience, oh God, Father, oh God, the greatest rewards in our life because, God, we will stand as one, as faithful. I pray, God, that we will be faithful, that God, in our mountain, that we will be faithful in our valleys. I pray this morning, God, Unctionize us, Lord, and let every heavy weight, God, and everything in our life be purged. Oh, God, Father, today. And I pray, give us a, a renewed desire. Oh, God, Father, kill the fire within our spirit. God, let it be a fire of a bird. That God, the unction, the anointing, your presence, oh, God, will be upon our lives, Almighty God, today. Jesus. If somebody say yes to that, say God, here am I. Use me for your honor and for your glory. Come on, somebody. God, use me for your honor and glory. God, use me for your honor and glory. Use me. holding the emblems this morning and for every person in the midst today you have heard the word of God that you have decided to be the best that God wants you to be as you hold these emblems this morning in your hand remember that Christ loves you God loved the world you and I that he gave his very best I believe in return that we must give our very best back to Him. And so therefore this morning, as we hold these emblems this morning in our hands, the bread that represent His body that was broken for you, and the wine that represent the blood that was shed on Calvary for you, I declare this morning that we, as sons of the kingdom of the living God, as we recognize this memorial, as we recognize what Christ has done and the love of our Father towards us, I pray this morning, just as Jesus did, the night just before he was betrayed, he broke bread and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup of the sub said, This is your new covenant in my blood. And as often as you eat the bread and you drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I pray that there will be transformation in our lives. I pray there will be unity in our spirit. I pray, God, Father, there will be a total surrender of our lives to you. And I pray as we partake of Holy Communion, I pray, God, every benefit. God, all that you have done to Christ, to redeem and to restore us, God, Father, will enjoy and walk in these benefits. I pray that our lives throughout the course of this year will be used for your honor and glory. That Christ will be seen, God, through every act and actions that come forth from our life. I pray that we will put you first in everything that we do. I pray, oh God, Father, today, that we will grow and prosper. We will grow strong and healthy in mind, body, and spirit. I pray, oh God, Father, that, Lord, there will be nothing that is too hard for us to do for you. And God, we will not hold back anything from you. That, God, we recognize that whatever we give to you, Father God, we are sowing our best seeds into good ground. Knowing, Father, that when we plant, when we sow, we will always reap the harvest. Yes. And so I believe, God, this morning, where your people have been planted, 
I pray, oh God, Father, they will blossom. And Father, there will be a fruits in your life, fruits that will remain, that you will be pleased with them. Father, I declare this morning the bread and the wine is blessed and sanctified. And I pray as we partake of it this morning, we partake of this consciousness of God knowing what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's partake of the bread this morning. Let's hold up our cup. Thank you, Lord, for giving your life for us. In return, God, we will lay our life down for our brothers. I pray that God, through this process, will be our brother's keeper. I pray through this process, so oh God, you will go the extra mile. I pray, God, let the love of Christ be demonstrated for more life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's body with the wine. I want you this morning, before we worship again, just I want you to go to about two or three and I want you to hug them. Give them a great hug this morning. <coughs> and let them know that Christ loves you. Would you do that this morning? Just step out your seat and let that person know that God loves them. Come on. days of prayer and fasting I want you to know also that because of the weather and I know it's gonna get colder we will plan we normally plan the first week to meet here but I know it's really be really cold so what we're gonna do we will be here on Wednesday and we'll be here on Friday the rest of the days we're gonna be on the line on the prayer line I trust that everybody 
Um, if you come on the line, we will start at 8.30 on the line. With some of the leaders and with all of you coming in, we'll be able to pray on the line. It's a conference line. And as much as you could come on, you'll be in this uh, conference setting. And you'll be able to pray, you'll be able to hear each other. You'll be able to ask and, and share your requests. And you'll have leaders praying over the telephone um, for the needs that there may be. Is that okay? All right. Wednesday possible, be here. Friday, for those of you who can come. All right, we're going to have a grand time. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I bow in worship and praise before you. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ. I claim the protection of his blood for my family, my finances, my home, my spirit, soul, mind, and body. I surrender myself completely in every area of my life to you. I take a stand against all the workings of the devil that will try and hinder me and my family from best serving you. I address myself only to the true and living God. I refuse any involvement of Satan in my prayer. Satan, I command you and all your demon forces of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ to leave my presence. I bring the blood of Jesus Christ between you and my family, my home, my finances, my spirit, soul, mind, and body. I declare, therefore, Satan, that you and your wicked spirit are subject to me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Furthermore, in my own life today, I destroy and tear down all the strongholds of the enemy. I smash every plan that has been formed against me and my family. I tear down the strongholds of the devil against my mind. I surrender my mind to you. Blessed Holy Spirit, I affirm Heavenly Father that you have not given me the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a song mind. Therefore, I resist the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I refuse to fear. I refuse to doubt. I refuse to worry because I have authority over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm me and my family. I claim complete and absolute victory over the forces of darkness in the name of Jesus. I bind the devil and I command him to lose my peace, to lose my joy, to lose my prosperity and every member of my family for the glory of God and by faith I call it done in Jesus name Amen and Amen this morning somebody clap your hands for the Lord so as you go we look forward as again as I can iterate that 2014 is the year that God will reward the faithfulness of the faithful. I hear you this morning to walk in obedience to what God's word says and experience the manifold.